Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here with a call to action for prayer for those in these war-torn countries. Talking particularly about Ukraine, as it seems now that things are really getting serious over there and are showing no signs of changing. So let's see what we can do about that. Let's petition our Father and let's see if we can send those guys some help. But before we do, let me talk a little bit about prayer and the common mistakes made while praying. If you think you're an expert on prayer, just bear with me for a moment. We'll get to the prayer in a second. But for many of us, we have never really been taught to pray. It's kind of something we kind of picked up on our own. Well, in this video, I just want to point out a few technical issues that will make our prayers better. Now, we're looking in the third testament of the Bible. You can find a link to this in the description of this video, both an audio that you can listen to on YouTube and a PDF that you could download to your device for free. We're going to jump down to chapter 17, which is the new way of worshiping God or the new way of worshiping our father creator, hallowed be his name. This section teaches us all about prayer and we've done a lot of videos on the subject. So look for a playlist at the end if you want more information. Like I said, there's just a few points that I want to pull out here. The first verse that I'll pull out only because it's in chronological order is verse nine. It says, do you see people occupied making the war on one another in this materialistic time? Yet I tell you, even in the middle of these wars, many men have found the secret of prayer, that which is born of the heart and comes to me as an urgent call, a protest, as a plea. So for the guys that's on the battlefield, literally in these war zones, they may not need a class that I'm about to show you. They kind of figure it out on their own, as you could imagine, when your life is in danger. But for those of us who are living more comfortable lives, we may need a little more instruction to give our prayers more power. So let's come down to verse 41, which says, Disciples, in the second era, my apostles asked me how they should pray, and I taught them the perfect prayer, which you call the Lord's Prayer. Now I tell you, be inspired by that prayer, by its meaning, its humility, and its faith, so that your spirit communicates with mine. For it will not be your material lips that pronounce those holy words, but your spirit that speaks to me in its own language. So we're aware of the Lord's Prayer. We can read about that, I believe, in Matthew chapter 6. It has the key elements to prayer, but we're seeing here that it may be too many elements if we do it with our lips. If we say the prayer verbally, that is one of the major problems with prayer these days. It is a materialistic prayer. And we learn here in the Third Testament that materialistic prayers are only said in vanity and do not elevate to the place where we need them to go. You could imagine if we were in that war zone, we wouldn't feel it necessary to say a verbal prayer. And that's what it was talking about earlier when it was referring to how they would actually figure it out. Verse 43 says, Do not let it be only your lips that call me father, for many of you tend to do so by rote. I wish that when you say our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Those words come from the purest part of your being, meditating on each one of the phrases so that you are afterward inspired and in perfect communication with me. So here is the second error that we most commonly make in prayer nowadays. And that is praying to somebody other than our father. Sure, we wouldn't do so intentionally, but if we don't identify who we're praying to, who would know? I mean, there are several Elohim out there and there are several people who don't bother to even pray to Elohim, but pray to figurines. So if you don't identify who you're sending your prayer to specifically, how are you to be sure that it is to be heard? I mean, it's like picking up a phone and just pushing buttons, not being sure that you're dialing the right number. And don't be arrogant like those who say the Father knows who we're talking about. You remember in the Lord's Prayer, the Messiah told us specifically to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. So let's get into the prayer. Sure, I'm going to start with our Father who art in heaven, but then I'm going to go on to say verbal prayer. And someone is going to say, well, coach, didn't you just say that we shouldn't be saying verbal prayers and that even in the additional text, it goes on to say how verbal prayers are virtually useless. And yes, I do know that. I do know that the prayer I'm about to say is going to be relatively ineffective in that I'm going to say it verbally. But the intent is to put the message on your heart as you hear it through your ears and repeat the same words spiritually. That's how it works. That's why there are those who still today say verbal prayers. It's not for their benefit, but for ours. Kind of focusing our prayer in one area. Well, as you pray spiritually, let's focus our prayers toward Ukraine. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Abba, we come to you today, Lord, asking that you will look on those individuals over there on the battlefield. The Russian soldiers, as well as the Ukrainian soldiers. Father, we know that those people are not there under their own desire. So we ask you to touch their heart to give them a sense of doing the right thing and to direct their steps according to your will. And if it be your will, Father, we ask that you will end the war altogether, that you will cause a ceasefire and cause the troops to back out or to back down, returning peace to the area, even if only temporarily for those citizens who are trying to escape. Lord, we ask that you will give them a path and a way out we ask that you will give them clothing, give them shelter, and give them food as they try to retreat or try to take cover where they're at. For those that are wounded, Lord, we ask that you will send angelic help to help them, to find them in their need, to find them in the place where they are, and to bring them the medical attention that they need. For the children, Lord, we ask that you will put your hands specifically on them as they're in confusion, not understanding what's all going on, we ask that you will give them reminders of who you are and how they can reach out to you in times of need, when they need clothing and when they need help and when they need food. Father, we ask you to touch the leaders, those involved in making the commands. Lord, we ask you to give them a sense of doing the right thing. We ask you to give them a sense of peace, maybe even wanting to stop the war altogether. But even if it is your will that the war continue, we ask that you will direct it according to your will, making sure the bombs fall where you would have them to fall. And those that are directed towards people who desire peace, we ask that those bombs fail and not explode and destroy those lives. We have many more prayers we can ask, Father, in this situation. But for the sake of time, we ask that in our silence, you find those necessary words to help those people over there. In your son's name we pray, amen, and so be it.